the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everybody and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to start exploring the choose function. And the choose function is part of Excel's lookup functions, but it doesn't tend to get as much love as more well-known functions like VLOOKUP and INDEX. But choose can be very useful. Essentially what it allows you to do is choose a result from numerous different options using an index number. And I've got a few different examples of how to use choose in different scenarios. So let's start out super basic. So you start to get an idea as to how this function works. So on this first spreadsheet, I have a list of different colors. And next to that list in column A, I have a number assigned to each of these colors. And this number here is what we're gonna be using as the index number. So what I'm hoping to achieve is over here where we have index in cell E2, I want to be able to type in an index number, for example, number three, and then have it show the result in cell E4. So essentially it's going to match this index number to this list and pull back the corresponding result, which in this scenario would be blue. So let's take a look at how we can set this up. So let's click in cell E4 and type in equals choose. Now I have a couple of different arguments here. The first one being the index number. So the index number is going to be those numbers that you can see in column A. So in this case, 1 to 6. Now where am I going to be inputting those index numbers? Well, I'm going to be inputting them into cell E2. So my index number is going to be found in that specific cell. I'm going to press the F4 key just to lock that in place, comma. I now need to provide Excel with the different options that it's choosing from. And these have to be separate values as opposed to ranges. So for example, the argument that we're on now is value one. So essentially, what is my first option? Well, it's red in cell B2. And I'm going to press F4 to lock. Comma, what's my next value? It's what we have in B3, F4 to lock. And I'm going to carry on doing the same thing, providing Excel with all of the different options that it needs to choose from. Once I've done that, I can close off my bracket and hit enter. Now at the moment, I'm getting an error, and that's because I haven't provided an index number for the formula. So if I now click in cell E2 and type in, let's say, a number 2 and hit enter, the result that I'm getting is green. If I change this to 6 and hit enter, I get the result of purple, 3, I get blue, so on and so forth. So that is choose in its most basic form. Let's now move on to combining it with the sum function to give us a more complex result. So in this scenario, I have a very straightforward table. Again, this could be something like a sales table. I have some products listed down in column A, and then I have months of the year, January to June, running across the top. And again, what I essentially want to do is be able to type in a month number. So in this case, that's going to be one to six. But this time, I want it to sum the total of whatever month I select. So let's click in cell J4, and we're going to start out with the sum function. Open our bracket and then straight into choose. Once again, we need to provide an index number. Now that index number is going to be in cell J3, F4 to lock, comma. Now I need to provide my values. And because I'm doing a sum, I can select a range. So essentially, if the index number in cell J3 is number one, I want it to sum all of the January figures. So value one is going to be B4 to B10, and I'm going to lock those, comma. I'm going to carry on going through doing the rest of these, making sure that I press F4 to lock them as I go. close off my bracket and hit enter. So it looks like there I've forgotten to close off a bracket and I can see yes I opened two brackets for sum and also for choose and I only closed off one at the end. 
Now Excel is pretty intuitive. It recognizes that you haven't added enough brackets. So I'm just going to say, yes, I want you to automatically correct that for me. Now, once again, we have an error in there because I have no index number in cell J3. So if I type in five and hit enter, what I should get here is the total for all of the values for month number five. And month number five is May. A quick way I can check this is to highlight all of those cells, glance down into my status bar, and I should see that the sum that I'm seeing in there matches the result of my formula, which it does. I'm going to apply some accounting formatting and take those decimal places down. Let's change this to two. And I can see that that's working very nicely. Now, if I was to enter an invalid index number in here, so something like seven, I'm going to get an error because I've only indexed January to June. That is essentially numbers or months one to six. So if I wanted to, to make this a little bit easier for anyone using this spreadsheet is I could add a little piece of data validation in there to let people know that they can only enter in a value between one and six. And this is very simple to do. If we jump up to the data tab, jump back into data validation. And this time what I'm going to do here is on the settings tab, I'm going to say allow a whole number with the minimum value being one and the maximum being six. Anything outside of this, I'm going to produce an error alert, which is going to say error. Please input a value between one and six. So now if anyone tries to enter in something that isn't valid, as soon as they hit enter, they're going to get a super helpful message, which tells them that they need to enter a valid number. So we're going to make our final example slightly more complex. Now, what I have here is a list of students in column A and then their respective test scores, which have been formatted as percentages. And what I essentially want to do here is type in either a number one to see the top five test scores or a number two to see the bottom five test scores. And I want them to display in this area just here. I also want this heading row to update depending on whether I've entered a number one in here or a number two. So let's deal with that first. I'm going to type in equals choose and open my bracket. Now, where does my index number go? Well, it goes in cell F3. And I'm going to press F4 to lock that, comma. What is my first value? Well, if the value in F3 is a number one, I want that heading to say top five test scores. So I'm going to put that in quote marks. Comma. What's value number two? Well, if I put a two as my index number, I wanted to show the bottom five test scores. So once again, we're going to put that in quote marks, close them off and then close our bracket. Let's hit enter and see what we get. It looks good so far. And if I change this index to a number two and hit enter, it's giving me bottom five test scores. So I'm happy that that is working correctly. So now I want to use choose in combination with the large and small functions that we saw in a previous lesson to pull back the top five test scores and the bottom five test scores, depending on the index number that I've entered into cell F3. So we're going to start out with equals choose, open our bracket. Where is our index number? Well, it's in cell F3 and we're going to press F4 to lock that comma. What is my first value? Well, this is where I want to use the large function. What is my array? Well, I'm pulling back the test scores. So control shift down to select the entire array. Can't see your formula. You can press control backspace to jump back to the cell you're working in. I'm going to press F4 to lock those comma. Then I need to tell Excel if I want it to provide the top test score, the second top, the third top, so on and so forth. Well, I want it to start with the top score. And because I have my little index numbers just here, I can choose cell G4. Now I'm going to drag this formula down so I don't want to lock this particular cell. Let's close that off, comma. So essentially what I've constructed there 
is everything that's going to happen if there is a number one as the index number. It's going to show me the top five test scores. So now I need to define what happens if there is a number two in there. Well, I want it to show me the bottom five. So I'm going to use the small function. This works in the same way. I'm going to select the same range of test scores, F4 to lock, and I'm still going to use G4 to tell Excel I want to start from the bottom most test score. Close off the small function and close off choose. Hit enter and then I can drag this formula down. Now currently I don't have percentage format applied to these cells so let's fix that right away and take those decimal places down. And there we go, those are the top five scores. And if I change the index number to two and hit enter, it's showing me the bottom five test scores. And just as a final quick practice, if you wanted to pull back the student name that's associated with those test scores, so let's add another column here. Let's just say student, and I'm going to use Format Painter to copy that formatting across. What I could do is use index and match or an XLOOKUP. So let's choose XLOOKUP. My lookup value is whatever is in cell H4, comma. I'm looking it up in the test scores range, control shift down, and F4 to lock. I want it to return the student name, F4 to lock. I'm not too worried if it's not found, so let's just move past that argument. I want to do an exact match, and I want it to search first to last through the list. Close the bracket and hit enter. And now I can copy this formula down and I get the student names. If I change the index number to two and hit enter, everything updates nicely. So that is how you can use choose with large and small and also a quick recap on how you can utilize XLOOKUP in this situation as well. That's it for this lesson. I will see you in the next one. Hi guys and welcome back. In the previous lesson, we started to take a look at how we can use the choose function in Excel to perform lookups based on an index number. And I showed you a number of different scenarios in which you can use the choose function. So in this lesson, I want to move that idea on a little bit and make this more advanced by incorporating form controls and charts. And this is a really good example for seeing how different elements of Excel can work together to create something that's really interactive. Now, in order to save a bit of time, I've already started creating the chart. And I don't want to really go into how I created this chart in this particular lesson, because we're going to be doing a lot of work on charts a bit later on in the course. Now, the data that you're looking at is basically the data that we were using in the last lesson. So here we have our products listed, our months across the top, and then we have our sales data. And all I've basically done is copied and pasted this first month's data onto the chart worksheet. So currently what you're seeing in this chart is the data for January. Now, what you also might notice is that on this chart, I have some form controls. Now, if you've never used form controls before, you'll find them on the developer tab on the ribbon. Now, it's worth noting here that the developer tab isn't activated by default in Excel. So if you're looking at your Excel right now and, and thinking to yourself, well, I can't see a developer tab, just make sure you jump into file, go down to options, and in the customize ribbon area, make sure you have a tick next to developer on the right hand side. Now the developer tab contains some of the more advanced things that you might want to do in Excel. So things like macros, you can jump into the VBA code here, but it also contains a group that allows you to insert different types of form control. And the one that I've used on this chart is this one just here, the option button form control. Now, once again, we are going to be using these a lot a bit later on in this lesson, but all I literally did here was select the form control, drag, and then you can double click to rename it. Now with these form controls on the chart, I've actually linked them to cell A1. So if I click on this first form control for January, and in order to do that, I need to hold down control when I click, otherwise I'm just making the option button selection, and then jump up to the developer tab and go into properties. 
this is going to show me which cell this particular form control is linked to. And earlier on, I linked all three of these buttons to cell A1. Now, if we look in cell A1, you can see in here currently I have the number 1. And this number is going to serve as the index number when we construct the choose formula. Now, my final aim here is to be able to select any of these option buttons, have the data update on the left hand side, but also have the chart update as well. So let's take a look at how we can get this working. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is delete out all of these figures for January. And you can see my chart goes a little bit skew -if. So now I can go in and construct my choose formula. So let's say equals choose, open our bracket. Where is my index number coming from? Well, it's coming from cell A1. And I'm going to press F4 to lock that, comma. Now I want my values. Now my values are located on the other worksheet. And the cell that I'm currently working in, I really just want it to pull back those headers, January, February, or March. So my first value is going to be January. So let's jump across to the data worksheet. And let's just move this screen tip out of the way and select cell B3. Now I intend on copying this formula down so I don't need to lock it. Comma, value 2 is going to be C3. February, comma, value 3 is going to be March. Now I could carry on going, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to build this chart for the months of January to March. So I can close my bracket and hit enter. And you can see it pulls through January because the index number is currently 1. What you'll also notice is that the January option button is selected and the chart title says January. Obviously, the chart doesn't contain anything yet because we don't have any figures. If I was to change the index number to 2, everything is going to update to February. If I change it to 3, it's going to update to March. So this formula looks like it's working correctly, so I can now auto fill it down to pull those numbers through and the chart automatically updates. I'm going to apply a little bit of accounting format and let's test to see if these option buttons are working. So if I select February, everything updates. Let's try January, everything looks perfect. So that is just one example of how you can use form controls to make a really interactive chart. And because this is such a visual way of displaying data, this is going to come in really useful for when we construct our dashboard. Now, there is a whole host of other form controls that you could utilize. This is purely just an example of one. So I would recommend that you have a little play around with these and see how you can incorporate the choose function when using these different form controls. But for now, that is it. I will see you in the next lesson. If you're not a subscriber, Click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the files the instructor used in this tutorial and follow along, click over there. And click over there to watch more videos on YouTube from Simon Says It.